Hello and welcome to Cardorific. In this video, we are going to see how we can extract bottleneck features from pre-trained neural networks such as VGG16, ResNet50, and Exception in Python. In transfer learning, we take a pre-trained model, and by model, I mean the network itself with its train weights and then remove the fully connected layers at the end and here the output of the last layer right before fully connected layer is called the bottleneck features these features represent the activation map from the last convolution layer in the network so we can say that bottleneck features from any pre-trained neural network represent the last activation maps before the fully connected layers so let's start programming and see how we can do that. As you can see that I am back to my spider editor of Python and I have already imported libraries that I am going to use in this program. One of which is NumPy, which is the most basic and most commonly used. And the next library I have imported is VGG16 and its preprocess input function. So VGG16 will be the first pre-trained neural network that I will use to extract the bottleneck features. We can import these functions from care applications.bgg16 next library i'm going to use is image io as i told you before in my previous videos that opencv library imports an image in bgr color scale by default and if we don't convert bgr to rgb color scale later we can mess up with the colors so therefore i have used image io that reads our image in rgb format by default and i will be using cv2 library only to resize my input image next i have created a variable input underscore image that holds my input image including its complete path so this is an rgb image of a cat using the i am read function of image io i am going to import this image or read this image and load its pixel intensities inside image variable i'm going to run my program written so far so in first running i got an error of uh, you can see in my variable explorer that i have successfully imported the intensity values of my input image and the width of this image is 640 and the height is 427 and 3 represents its number of color channels next i am going to use opencv library so that i can use its resize function and here i am going to use the new dimensions which are 224 by 224 the reason why i am doing this is that you can see that the two dimensions of uh, input image are not similar which can yield different dimensions of the output when we extract the bottleneck features to keep the output dimension similar for x and y it is important to keep the size of input image for x and y similar after running this line you can see that the new dimension of my input image is now 224 by 224 and i have not changed the color channels so it is as it was before next i'm going to expand the dimension to add number of input samples to extract bottleneck features using vgg16 we need to add extra dimension in the beginning which will represent the number of sample so here we have only one image as an input sample so we are going to expand its dimension simply using the reshape i am going to expand it by adding the first dimension as one and keeping the rest of the dimensions as it is I'm going to run this line. You can see that the input image is now containing the number of samples. So in this case, we have only one image to extract bottleneck features. The rest of the dimensions are same. Next, I'm going to preserve the width and height of uh, my input image into another variable's width and height. Using these variables, I will mention the dimension of input layer in VGG16. Next, I'm going to call VGG16 function so that we can generate our model and upload its pre-trained weights inside our program. So, VGG16 function takes first parameter, which is weights. In this program, I'm going to use the pre-trained weights of ImageNet. Next parameter is include of, and here I have mentioned it as false. When loading a given model, the include of argument can be set to false, in which case the fully connected output layer of the model used to make predictions is not loaded. So, using this method, we can have a new output layer to be added and trained. Or in other words, by mentioning the include underscore top is equal to false, I'm saying that discard the last fully connected layers and just upload the order from input layer to the layer 
right before fully connected layers. And the last parameter of VGG cysteine function is the input shape. And here I have mentioned its input shape using the variables that I have just created above. I have removed the additional comma. As I told you before that besides importing the VGG cysteine function, we have also imported its preprocess underscore input function. And before we use our input image and uh, pass it to our model so that it can generate bottleneck features for us, first we need to convert these pixel values that are already in unsigned integer format. We need to convert these into normalized float values. So in deep learning models, if you are going to work on images, the best way is to convert these unsigned integer format of pixel values into normalized floats. And on these float pixel values, the network converges well. So I have called preprocess underscore input function and I have passed my input image to this function and the return float values will be saved inside prep underscore input variable. I'm going to run this line. You can see that the variable prep underscore input is now in the format of float. Next, I am going to call the model dot predict function so that we can have bottleneck features for this float input image. So I have called model dot predict function and passed my float image and the generated bottleneck features will be saved in vn underscore features variable. I'm going to run these lines. In my variable explorer, you can see that I have created my vn bottleneck features because of our input sample is one so uh, we have got 512 feature maps and each feature map has dimension 7 by 7 and to have a glance over generated model where we kept include top is equal to false i am going to print its summary you can see in my ipython console that the vgg16 model has been uploaded and uh, its first layer is input layer where i have kept the dimension of input as 224 by 224 and this is colored image the output of this last layer is 512 feature maps with dimension 7 by 7. So you can see here that this uploaded model does not include any fully connected layers at the end. Next I am going to sh next I am going to reshape this vn underscore feature variable so that the number of uh, feature maps comes right before its two dimension. And to do that I have simply got the reshape function over vn underscore features and uh, its first dimension will be kept as it is which will be represented by its shape 0. And you can see that number of maps is the last dimension so I am moving the last dimension by negative indexing right after the number of input sample and uh, the rest of dimension I am keeping the same sequence by first mentioning the shape 1 and the last dimension is shape 2 and the new dimension and the bottleneck features with this new dimension will be saved inside train underscore features variable so i'm going to run this line now you can see that the train underscore features is in perfect shape as i wanted to so up to here we have successfully generated the bottleneck features and reshaped it and the best way from here is to save these variables inside the numpy variable so that we can take these variables anywhere and import its values so that we can use them later with any other neural network. And to do that, I'm going to generate a numpy variable by calling the np.saveZ function. And the first parameter of this function is the name of file that I have just created here. So in this case, I have used the name of feature as features and the values of this variable will be train underscore features, which is reshaped bottleneck feature. Before I run these lines, I have made some correction to the path of my input image. So instead of using relative path, I have used absolute path, including the name of my input image. Next, I'm going to run my code. So in my files, explorer you can see that the numpy variable has been generated with the name of vgg16 underscore features you can see that the type of this file is dot npz which represents the numpy variable that carries our features data how we can load these numpy variable back into our program 
I'm going to use numpy.load function. So using the numpy.load function, I have passed the name of my numpy variable file as its first parameter and the uploaded numpy variable data will be saved inside bottleneck variable. And for each numpy variable, you must remember the name of your feature column so that you can upload its values. In this case, the name of my feature column is features and by indexing through it, I am going to extract the data from bottleneck numpy variable and save this data inside my train underscore features i'm going to run these lines so you can see that the current features are uploaded successfully if you want to know how we can visualize these uh, feature maps that has dimension 7 by 7 you can watch my video where i have uh, shown you how we can visualize the extracted features from pre-trained neural networks. We can do the same with ResNet 50 and exception pre-trained neural networks, what we did with VGG16 neural networks. To import the ResNet 50 and its pre-process, similarly also the exception and its pre-process functions, I am going to uncomment these lines. To call the ResNet and its corresponding pre-process, input i have uh, imported these functions from grass.applications.resnet and i did the same to import the exception and its corresponding preprocess input functions by importing them from keras.applications.exception and by keeping the line same starting from mentioning the input image reading it and resizing it and then we reshaped it so that we can expand it to hold the number of input samples then we reserve the width and high dimensions into separate variables so that we can use these variables to mention the dimension of input layer. Similar to this line, I have uh, generated the ResNet and exception models by keeping the same parameters which are weights include top and input shape. I'm going to replace the input shapes for ResNet and exception. Now because we have uh, generated three types of models, we cannot use the same variable to hold the generated models. We are going to change it into their corresponding models and exception to avoid the confusion whenever i call the preprocess underscore input function i have removed its import in these lines where i imported the corresponding pre-trained neural network and using the base library for every pre-trained neural network i have called preprocess underscore input so after we obtain the generated model i am going to preprocess the input by calling the preprocess underscore input function of every corresponding pre-trained neural network as you can see in these lines and to keep the output variable different, I have used the same name that represents the preprocessing according to the base function. Next, using these generating models and the preprocessed input, I have called the predict function for every pre-trained neural network and passed its preprocessed input to extract the bottleneck features from every pre-trained neural network. Next, I am going to run these lines written so far here. In my iPath in console, you can see that my code has first uploaded the ResNet weights and now it's uploading the exception weights. And in my variable explorer, you can see that I have successfully obtained the bottleneck features from every corresponding pre-trained neural network. So you saw previously that the dimension of bottleneck features extracted from VGG16 is 7 by 7 and the total number of feature maps are 512 and the ResNet bottleneck features for the same input sample has different dimensions. The width and height is the same as VGG16 but the total number of feature maps are 2048. And if we see for exception bottleneck features for the same input sample, the dimensions are similar to what we obtained in ResNet bottleneck features. Next, I am going to reshape these bottleneck features so that the number of total feature maps comes right before width and height dimension of each feature map. After obtaining the bottleneck features from every pre-trained neural network, I have reshaped them so that the total number of feature maps comes right before the width and dimensions of each feature map. So I am going to run these lines. You can see that for every bottleneck feature, the new dimension is as I mentioned. Next, I am going to save these reshaped bottleneck features by calling the np.saveZ and uh, 
for every bottleneck feature i have used different file name of npz file i am going to run these lines in my file explorer you can see that now i have three numpy variables with file extension dot npz and using the same library which is np dot load you can load numpy variables by mentioning these file names inside numpy dot load function this is it for this video thank you for watching i hope you find it helpful if you did do like and share also subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video if you have any suggestions leave them in comments section i will do consider it thank you